This marks the official return of Mike Spider Slayer. Stay tuned for Spider Slayer's Hall episode number 280. Yes, Frontline fans, welcome back to Comic Frontline and fans. You're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do Spider Slayer's Hall episode number 280. This is the video series where each and every week I share with all of you the comic books that I picked up at the comic book store. So without further ado, everybody, let's get started and show you what I got at the store. So here it is. Mysterious metal bag. Obviously, that's been what they've been using for the past few weeks, and they've been consistent. So, first things first, bag goes on the floor. I picked up three weeks worth of bags just the other day. Now I'm starting a new collection. All right, bags and boards, got those. And let's talk about the first book. So, first things first is we wound up getting uh, Nightwing, uh, New Order. Issue number one. Uh, it's just so funny. Like when I heard about this, I'm like, dude, it reminds me of like Hell Hydra. You know, it's just so similar. Even like with the shield symbol and everything, it just it looks so similar. But from what I heard from other people already, I heard that this was good. Um, so I'm going to do a review on Frontline. Uh, I'm going to try to get it up today, Wednesday, if not tomorrow. So this is Nightwing, a new. The New Order, issue number one. Uh, here's just a quick preview art right there. Um, and it looks like Superman is beat the hell up. So, quite interesting. So, yeah, Nightwing New Order. All right. Next, we wind up getting Secret Empire, issue number nine. Ever so close to getting to the finale here. Um, I know some people may be happy about this. I overall have been enjoying this series. Do I think it's the best ever written events that Marvel has ever done? No. Um, but I do give Marvel credit to where it's due. It's been consistently released. Um, and uh, it had some really um, good issues in the beginning. And it kind of slowed down. Uh, but the last issue really picked up for me. So uh, I've been enjoying it overall. So we'll see what issue number nine has to offer. All right, next, we have issue number five of Plastic. Uh, yes, I am still reading this book as we get this psychotic guy who kills people who has this fetish over his plastic doll, which considers his wife. We don't still really know who Virginia is if it was an ex-wife and he replaced her as a sex toy. We don't know. But we're getting close to this conclusion of this series. So we'll see what happens. Plastic issue number five. Interesting cover. All right. Next, Red Sonia. Uh, this is issue number eight. This starts a new story arc uh, with this particular series as we get to see Red Sonia now, I think, gets to go on the road. And somehow she's got to go back to her time or whatnot. I forgot what happens. It seems like it's been a while since this issue has or series has actually been released. Uh, but nevertheless, it's been a solid book. Uh, the artwork work has always been great. The action has been uh, actually phenomenal in here. So I can't wait to see what direction this book goes uh, now that this opening story arc is over. So Red Sonia issue number eight. All right, next, we have Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, issue number 27. Uh, yes, um, this is about Orion. Uh, I did not read the last issue, so I'll have to read the next issue with this one because I was busy with, I don't know what it was, the kids getting back to school or whatever it is, but I didn't get a chance to read the previous issue. I heard it was really good, um, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and reading it just back to back. And this is a pretty awesome uh, couple pages here that I'll show you before you guys dive into your copy when you do read it. Yes, looks pretty cool. So Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, issue number 27. All right, next, 
I'm a fan of this character, this villain. This is X-Men Gold issue number 10. Omega Red has been resurrected back to life. And uh, now it looks like he's going to give um, uh, problems here for um, our X-Men characters. And then the last issue was really good because we wound up getting to see... Um, you know, the relationship build between Kitty and Colossus and Rachel and, uh, and Nightcrawler. So I thought it was really cool. And, uh, just look at this page right here with, um, Omega Red and then him just like taking over this chick or sucking her life or whatever it is, dude. It's just gruesome. I like it. Pretty cool stuff there. Can't wait to see what happens. So X-Men Gold issue number 10. All right, next. I'm really curious about this one. Weapon X issue number 7. The whole total massive mutants of mass destruction, whatever the flip it was called, is over. I really enjoyed the overall story. But however, this looks like it kind of can... It kind of continues it because they track down that Hulk or whatnot. And uh, I love this cover here as we get to see our main characters in the reflection of the claws. So that's really, really cool there. Um, again, I like the series and uh, we'll see what happens with it. So that's Weapon X issue number seven. All right. Next, we have the continuation of Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, issue number six. Uh, as we got to see Kane and Ben Riley fight against each other in the last issue, I think the series has been a steady improvement. It was cool to see how uh, Ben Riley in the last issue sits there and holds Kane, gives him a gun, and says, Hey, let's work together. Here's a gun. If you want to kill me, kill me. And he actually goes and shoots him. I'm like, What the hell is that all about? So, will we actually start to see Kane and Ben work together instead of fighting against each other? That is still yet to be determined. And that's Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, issue number six. All right. Continuing with the Spider books, we have Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider Man. This is issue number three. Uh, we get to see Spider Man go on his date in that last issue. We find out that the Kingpin of Crime is behind a lot of things that's going on. We're learning about um, uh, Peter's um, sister a little bit more. There's some good humor in this particular book. Johnny Storm is in here, and I think he's hilarious. And so I think this series is pretty good, actually. And I can't wait to see how it dives further into. Uh, Peter's sister and whatnot and you know the involvement of Human Torch it's good to see him uh, working with Peter again so this is Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man issue number three all right next we have Edge of Venomverse Edge of Venomverse uh, issue number five I think is this the last one or is there one more um I don't know what to expect. There's all been a bunch of one shots. I think this one, I don't know, it has to do with Deadpool. Uh, you get the opening page, and this is what it looks like. There's actually a Venom uh, variant, or there's a, a variant cover that looks just like this interior cover, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so it has to do with it has to do with Deadpool, and it's like right out of Aliens here in this opening page is when you open it up. That's pretty funny, too. Maybe this one will be really good. The other ones have been kind of slow. This is probably up my alley because it's like got gore and blood and guts and zombie stuff. So this is Edge of Venomverse, issue 5. All right. Next, continuing with Deadpool. We got Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, issue number 4. Um... I'm not a huge fan of this. I, I really enjoyed the first one a lot more. This one, it's just, I don't know, it just feels it's just not quite the same. And I think it's something that we've learned to expect out of Deadpool at this point is him just slicing and dicing people and not giving a crap. And here he's hypnotized and he's dealing with different people and he's trying to get saved and whatnot. So it's okay. It's not my favorite thing in the world, um, but it's, it's all right. This is pretty interesting as it opens up. Uh, in black and white pages and the word bubbles in here are colored so that's that's a different way to look at things here so oh yeah and he was ultron he became ultron or something like that i don't know deadpool kills the marvel universe issue number four just get the marvel legacy already all right next generations the mighty thor and the unworthy thor so we get to see these two interact with each other Again, I'm not a huge fan of these generation books. I'm getting them at a discount for $2.99. Um, I liked 
the um, Wolverine one last week. I thought it was pretty good. Had some strong messages there at the end of the book. And uh, we'll see how these two interact and where the story goes with this one. But I'm not expecting much here. So this is the Generations issue one with the two Thors. All right. Next, we have the filler story arc with Action Comics. This is issue 986. Not a fan of this particular story arc. It's just running its course until, you know, we get to better stories. <laughs> Check out this opening page. As you get to see Lex Luthor with his big-ass gun and he's shooting Superman. Like, yeah! You know, and then Superman's like, woo -hoo! That's pretty cool. That's not bad right there. So it's interesting. We'll see what happens. So Action Comics issue 986. Uh, all right. Next is a book that I wasn't going to pick out, but our own Comic Uno mentioned it to me as she got an advanced copy and she actually read it. And this is from uh, Boom Studios, I'm pretty sure. And this is Hi-Fi Fight Club, uh, issue number one. Uh, and so this is like a, I guess this is a, like a vinyl store uh, that's kind of be held under wraps as it's kind of like a secret underground vigilante club or whatnot. So that sounded like a pretty cool concept when Kat, you know, told me about it. So I decided to pick it up. So I'm really interested. So this is the, you know, the book that I normally wouldn't grab type of thing. So give it a try. And I think that is it. Yes, that is it. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the haul this week. Now it's your turn in the comments below to tell me which books you picked up for this week, which ones you're most excited for, and maybe some that you're thinking of dropping. And fans, as always, thank you for watching Comic Frontline. Don't forget to check out ComicFrontline.com. Also, don't forget to check out our live show. That happens every single Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we talk about our top five, all kinds of comic book news, and a whole lot more. So again, guys, until that next comic book review, enjoy those books, and I'll see you real soon. Bye, guys.